exciting affair. Check the numbers as we go to the of the tape here in Sacramento, and they are very, very similar. Perez, two years older. That's the biggest disparity you'll see. The height, identical. The reach, nearly the same at yesterday's weigh-in. Perez, initially a half pound over, made it on his second try. Agbeko with room to spare, as you can see. And the notable unified rules for this world title fight. There's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds, it's a no decision. After four rounds, they go to the scorecards. And if a punch causes a cut and the injured fighter cannot continue, he loses by TKO. So here at Arco Arena in Sacramento, California, we're getting ready for Luis Alberto Perez versus Joseph King Kong Agbeko for the IBF Bantamweight Championship. Let's get the formal introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the Arco Arena here in Sacramento, California, as we have a big night of action coming your way, a double world championship night brought to you by Don King Productions in association with Maloof Sports and Entertainment and Showtime. Well, fans, our first world title attraction is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, the President Mary and Muhammad Supervisor Al Lucas, along with the California State Athletic Commission. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Palmetto Bay, Florida, Richard Green. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Patricia Morse Jarman. And from Chula Vista, California, Fritz Werner. Werner. And our referee in charge, our third man in the ring, hails from Vacaville, California, Dan Stell. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Bantamweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with white trim, fighting out of the Bronx, New York, by way of Accra, Ghana. He weighed in at a trim and ready 116 and three quarter pounds with an outstanding record of 24 wins, only one defeat. He has 21 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former British Commonwealth Bantamweight champion and the current IBF number 15 Bantamweight in the world, introducing the challenger, Joseph King Kong Agbe. opponent across the ring, the defending world champion on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with white trim, hailing from Managua, Nicaragua. He weighed in at the Bantamweight limit of 118 pounds. His record, 25 wins, one loss, 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the two-time world champion and the current IBF Bantamweight champion of the world, introducing Luis El Demoledor Perez. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, now to give instructions, Dan Stell. Listen up, gentlemen, we know the rules. Listen, obey my commands all times, protect yourself all times. Touch gloves, come out the bell, good luck to both of you. Boxing's talented Bantamweight division to lead off our twin bill from Sacramento. They call him the Demolisher, El Demolador, the champion, the more experienced Luis Alberto Perez, a natural righty who fights from a lefty stance in rough physical fashion and typically gets right to it. Tough, strong Joseph King Kong Agbeko has good movement, which could be pivotal versus Perez. You don't want to stand in front of Luis. At his best, Agbeko keeps a fast pace and looks to wear you down. Here we go, round one scheduled for 12 for the IBF Bantamweight Championship. Agbeko can switch to southpaw. His defense is a bit suspect, but Agbeko knows Perez, too, is quite hittable. 
But Perez has a solid chin. He's been down just once. Perez in the red with the white trim. Agbeko in the black trunks with the white trim. There's no question in my mind this will be a shootout however long it lasts. And I'll tell you right away for Joseph Agbeko, good news. He is able to get the lead right hand in just as Dmitry Kirillov was against Perez. That's no guarantee you're going to win, Steve, but at least you can get some things done. Boy, they are just toe-to-toe -to -toe in the center of the ring. Wailing away, body shots by Perez, digging to the midsection of Agbeko. Perez, a hard puncher. They tripped over one another there. And they are just going nonstop. Sustained two-way action here, and this is just the first round. It is like rock'em, sock'em robots out of the gate. They may have clashed heads. Oh, nice right hook by Perez. Of course, that's one of his signature punches, and he wants to land that to both the body and the head. So furious action here at the outset. What a pace to begin this fight. Both being extremely busy. You know, I thought of Gecko might just give a little lateral movement to Perez because you don't really want to stand right in front of him, but he's been doing that and for the most part being at least moderately successful at it. Perez continues to go to the body of Agbeko. Agbeko landing with a right upstairs. Perez missing with a right hand. And again, watch for that right hook of Perez who just landed to the body with his left. His left is pretty hard too. Perez heard that Agbeko is not strong in the body. And so that is a big target for the champion. A sweeping left hand there by Agbeko that tagged Perez on the head. They said uh, somebody who was part of Agbeko's training in New York told them that. And so we'll see how much he can uh, get to that. Oh, they banged heads head. again. Let's go. If Agbeko can outwork Perez throughout this fight, as long as it goes, it could get him closer to an upset. It could get him a world championship because Perez Stop. has Stop. been known to be Let's go. Box, out hustled. Dan Stell warning the challenger, Agbeko, to keep the punches up. Relentless action. Both landing. There's a nice right hand by Agbeko that sent Perez back. Tremendous exchanges here in the first round. Well, there was some great action in that uh, round, but there were also some awkward moments. Here is where Perez as he's tripping over the foot lands a right hook. And later on in the uh, in the round, we'll see the clash of heads. That's where Agbeko complaining to the referee. But in between those two awkward moments, they landed some hellacious more water. Shots. Listen to me. Listen to me. You have to hit him with your right twice. Keep covering up. Keep your guard up. Hear me. Keep your guard up. Always up. In two rounds will be done, but you have to keep your guard up. Ronaldo Mendoza in the corner of Luis Alberto Perez, or thanks to Felix de Jesus, our translator. As we begin round two, we'll see if the, the pace is similar to that of round one, which was wild and crazy. And you're not even Steve Martin. In your That's face. right. I don't have an arrow in my head. <laughs> There's some body work by Abgeko. Now, Perez promised us he was going to do that early, and he really has not. There's some of the awkward action from Perez. You know, he tends to get off balance a lot, as I mentioned in the keys, and it hurts him when he does. Bring nice. the punches up. Nice right hand by Abgeko to the chin. Bring the punches up. Again, the, the warnings by Dan Stell. Stop, to Agbeko. Stop Here we go. Bring the punches up. And now to Perez. Joseph Agbeko throws a very wide left hook. He still gets it home sometimes, but the better weapon for him in this fight right now is probably the straight right hand. Agbeko, uh, typically Stop. a smart Stay back. Stay back. fighter. Here we go. Box. He has power in both hands. We haven't seen him switch to left yet. He hasn't had to. They continue to wail away with friends. 
Galactic exchanges. A beautiful short run Stand up. Stand by back. Stand back. Here we go. But They are both getting some good work done. Now, Perez has not thrown his right hook as much as he would want to. There it is to the body, and he wants to double up with that punch Box out, to the head go, whenever he can. Boy, Perez's defense, God bless him, is non-existent. You know, he's a really terrific fighter offensively, but defensively, he is just so wide open. He's also so not we go. the quickest Box. fighter with his hands in this lower weight class, but he sure makes up for it with power and determination. Absolutely, and makes for very exciting fights. Coming up to a minute remaining in round two, scheduled for 12 for the IBF Bantamweight Championship. Off to a roaring start in this one. Box out, Jimmy hands are free. Perez in the red, 25 and one with 16 knockouts. Agbeko in the black, 24 and one with 21 KOs. Well, they are both throwing home run, home run balls with every punch. Going for the fences. It's been just a great round in three quarters. I mean, it's been a lot of fun. Incredible action from the opening bell. And this may be the first low in the action. As they step back and take a deep breath, and you can't blame them. Looking to regroup momentarily. Final 10 seconds of round two. And then Perez digs to the body. Trying to wear a Beko down. And take the air out of him. Well, we talked about the Perez right, but Perez can get the left hand in as well. There's a good straight left hand. You don't see that as much from Perez, but then look at the counter right by Agbeko, and that right hand became a very potent weapon for him. A couple that are glancing, but the fact is those punches can get to uh, Perez. Oh, 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 you're fine. Oh, you're fine. Not the washroom. A small body. Okay. Small body. Pull, pull my body. Let's go, let's go. body. They speak the language of Ga, their native tongue in in Ghana. Kawami Asante, uh, the trainer, also trains welterweight contender Joshua Claudi, who is scheduled to fight Luis Colazo. Of course, uh, Claudi, another tough guy who punished Diego Caranas back in April here on Showtime in Chico's final fight. Very good friends with Agbeko. They're going right after it here in round number three. More of the same. Nice right hand up top there by Agbeko. Just a quick poking shot. No, no, stop. You no, know, against down. most you lefties, bring you really Let's shouldn't go. be able to land that lead right as much as he's landing against Perez. But Perez squares himself uh, to his opponent and drops his hands. And so it's a very inviting uh, punch to throw. Again, Perez targeting the body. King Kong trying to uh, counter with a flurry of his own. Sweeping right hand there, right across. Scraped the face of Perez. Agbeko coming forward. It's Perez backpedaling for the moment. But it's give and take. Yeah, this has been great action, and both men have gotten a lot done here in the first several rounds. There's the jab of Agbeko now starting to emerge. Kind of a nuisance chopping jab there to perhaps set up the right hand. That's uh, one just to keep you at bay and off balance, a probing jab. There's the right hand straight down the middle. A good weapon against uh, Southpaw. Perez, as you pointed out, Steve, sometimes has these little low periods, and he's having one in this round in which he's just not throwing enough punches. Those jabs not getting there for Perez. Perez definitely a lot sharper than we last saw him after that long layoff. hard body shots there's the jab a little turnaround move by Agbeko for a moment he is, he's having fun in there now Joseph Agbeko but he's right Stop. in front Stop. of Perez Stop. juking and jiving and doing Box. all that stuff 
punches and not getting hit. Yeah, he's doing a lot of shoulder feints, almost James Tony-ish yeah. type moves, but that could be dangerous no, against no, a guy like Perez. Step back, step back. Go push his head down. Let's it's go, been a very good third round for Agbeko, though, and Luis Perez needs to kind of retool and figure out what he can land. Agbeko looking and feeling very confident right now, but as I said earlier, it is a mistake to stand in front of Perez. You have to show movement against Watch the out, champion. Free. He's got a good, a straight left and a very good right hook. But back comes Agbeko showing his strength. And Agbeko having a great round. <laughs> Let's go over to Jim Gray. Jim. All right, Steve, thank you very much. I'm here with Gavin Maloof. He owns the Sacramento Kings. He's the promoter here tonight with Don King of this fight here in his building. You guys going to get big into boxing now, Gavin, you and your brothers? We hope to. Uh, we, we really love our association with Don King, uh, one of the great promoters of our time. And uh, this is just bringing other events to Sacramento and all the great boxing fans uh, here in, in, the, in our great city. And of course, the Palms may be the site in the future. Let me ask you about your basketball team. The NBA season will get underway next week. Training camps will commence. New coach with Reggie Theus. How are the Kings going to be? Well, we're kind of under the radar. Nobody's picking us to do anything, but uh, we, we're really bullish on our coach and, and our coaching staff. We've had a lot of our players in practicing, working out a lot a, a, a long ahead of time before we've had it any other years so we're really kind of bullish on the season even though we might be uh, ruled out all right rebuilding yours is the championship year no I don't, I don't know if we're a championship team we're just trying to get in the playoffs if we, if we get in the playoffs then we can go to the next round and uh, take it from there all right Gavin we look forward to that thanks for having us back to you Steve thanks Thank Jim you. A very honest assessment of the upcoming Kings season by uh, owner Gavin Malou as they just continue to go toe to toe here as we enter round four. It's very reminiscent of this fight in 2000 with Johan Maisi and uh, where they just blasted away at each other for the entire fight and that's what this is all about right here. That would be a gecko's fight with Macy. Yeah, and he's he's used to this kind of action. He just goes for it. And of course, Perez is always happy to engage in this kind of fight. This is what he longs for. But tonight he's getting maybe a little more than he anticipated. Beautiful short stop, right stop, hand by a gecko go. as uh, as Perez came in. Yeah, it looks like it's slowly taking its toll on Perez. He's just a tad slower than he was the first three rounds, and a gecko is really starting to get to him. And now we see Perez lunging a lot more and then getting hit with counter punches by Agbeko. And that's something Luis Perez really doesn't want to do, but he, he senses a little urgency. Wow, another right hand by Agbeko. It connected right on the nose, literally. Perez continues to dig hard shots to the body. And perhaps hoping that the longer this fight goes, that's going to take it out of Agbeko, and then you go for the head. How low could Agbeko keep Stop. his so hands? And they are box. literally below his waist, and Perez not able to hit him. Look at that. He's just daring Perez to hit him. Yeah, almost showboat type tactics here by Agbeko, but he continues to land with that right hand. You know, we're, at this juncture, you ask yourself, what happens when a puncher like Perez is being pushed back and feels like the other guy has more initiative right now? It's a very difficult spot for a guy like Perez because he's not by trade a boxer. So the plot thickens here in Sacramento. Less than 50 seconds to go in round four for the IBF Bantamweight Championship scheduled for 12. Perez in the red, he's the champion. Agbeko charging hard here is the challenger wearing the black trucks. Another wonderful round for Joseph Agbeko. He has just beaten Perez to the punch for the How about this now? Perez switches to righty, which we don't see him do. Yeah, usually the other way around. It's usually Agbeko who switches to lefty, and Agbeko just scored again. Agbeko landed one right hand, and Perez said, no, I think I'll go back to the left hand. Yeah. He stands. Maybe that was a mistake. Not a good idea. Final seconds of round four. Again, Perez to the body. Doesn't seem to phase on Beko. Maybe he got the wrong information about Time. going good to the body. Him. 
Kang Mei, he cry. Kang Mei, Kang Mei. Well, Joseph Agbeko has done a bit of showboating, a bit showing a bit of bravado, and look how low these hands are. How much lower could you possibly put them? Juking, jiving, just daring Perez to hit him, and Perez is frozen. Can't seem to do anything. And the reason Perez is frozen is because he's hit with counter shots like that right hand that Agbeko landed. And did I say the right hand? Well, it's been a very good weapon for Agbeko. And that came from a counter when Perez lunged in with his left hand. So Joseph Agbeko, uh, the 25 year old who talk about coming in under the radar, as Gavin Malouf suggested his team is, came in under the radar for this spot. Interesting analogy. Agbeko 24 and 1, 21 knockouts, mostly nondescript opposition, but he has shown himself to be competitive at much higher levels, and we're seeing another illustration of that here in Sacramento. Perez now really coming forward. But it seems like King Kong Agbeko has all the answers to this point. Now, for Luis Perez at this juncture, he's got to find, this is going to sound like an absurd statement, but this is really the way no it is. He's got to find something no that can fist. land, a punch that he thinks can get there and build from that. And it ain't happening right now. Agbeko just so busy, so active. What a work rate he's got going here. High volume punching and landing with a lot of those shots, I might add. And you know, sometimes, I talked about the wide left hook of Agbeko, but sometimes he throws that punch very in a very compact manner with, and uh, with a lot Box of leverage on it. And when he does, Stop. he's making Stop. Perez feel it. Well, maybe his Lots. parents knew what they were doing when they named him <laughs> King Kong. They had an idea. He said he had no idea of exactly why his parents named him that. Here's a look at the, the press throw. They've all got it for Agbeko, Ray Hack from the Hartford Current, Martin McNeil from the Sacramento Beat, Pat Walsh, KFBK Radio here in Sacramento. And I have every round for Agbeko, so. Though the couple of the first two rounds were pretty close. Nice right hand by Agbeko. Back comes Perez, but Agbeko getting the better of the deal. Agbeko regroups. Left-right combination. The right really pushed Perez back. That was a strong hit. Now, Agbeko, we should point out, absolutely as confident as any fighter could be leading into this. He flatly said to us, I assure you I'll knock him out. Make no mistake. I won't pick a round, but I guarantee I will knock him out. So he was not... Uh, he was totally confident coming into this spot. And you can see the way he was walking to the ring. It seemed like he had Perez in his hip pocket already. You gotta bring him up. Last one, you understand me? Let's go. Dan Stell continues to caution Perez. He said, one more violation is gonna take a point away. And the thing that's bad about that is Perez has just started to do some pretty good body work. That takes something away, another thing away from his uh, arsenal. Yeah, now he's gotta be thinking about it all the time that he doesn't go south of the border. Oh, big left hook there to the head, and a right hand by Agbeko. He, he just, Perez just stopped at his tracks. And then Agbeko landed a straight right after the left hook. Agbeko again. Another right hand by Agbeko to the forehead of Perez. It's all Agbeko. Time. Let's go. Sit down, sit down, sit down for a while. Just sit down. Here's some water. First, we take a look at the lead right hand by Agbeko, which has been such a big weapon for him. And even the counter right hook from Perez didn't quite get there. And then south of the border, Goes Prez, it was a little bit low, even though he's done some very good body work, and uh, he gets a warning, and in fact, the last warning he will get before a point is deducted. The left hook lands by Egbeko. No, he doesn't throw that punch perfectly, but Steve, it still has power in it. A lot of work to be done Spots. by Perez. Joseph King Kong Agbeko from the Ewe tribe in Opera, Ghana. His mother cooks and sells beans. His father builds furniture right now. 
Joseph Akbeko is building points. Round six scheduled for 12 for the IBF Bantamweight Championship. Akbeko in his first attempt at a world title, and for Perez, it's his first defense of this particular belt. Back. There we go. And you know, even though he he uh, lost that majority decision to Sidorenko, who is now a Bantamweight champion, fought very well. Some believe he could have won it. This is really kind of a coming out party for the 27-year-old Akbeko, and he is making, so far, he is making the most of it. Rated number 15 by the IBF coming into this fight. Eight-year pro, and his only loss, as mentioned, the majority decision to Vladimir Sidorenko in 2004. And that was before Sidorenko became a world champion, but still was a very good fighter. Oh, there's those right hands. He just can't miss that, uh, Agbeko with those right hands. Another big right hand towards the end of that flurry by Agbeko. Now, here's the good news, if there's any, for Luis Perez. Step back, step back. He's getting go, hit box. with very big shots by Agbeko. Now, while Agbeko's winning these rounds and certainly landing, the, the fact of the matter is Perez isn't getting hurt enough to where it looks like he's going to go down. So Perez is a puncher who always has a puncher's chance in there. But how much more of this punishment can he take? That's the question. Perez uh, getting all red-faced, being punished, battered here by... King Kong Agbeko, and remember Perez, 5-0 and oh in world title fights. Stop, step back. Fight. Perez trying to march forward, but Agbeko is the one who, who scores. You wonder if it ever gets to a point where the champion just gets totally discouraged. Agbeko certainly working towards that goal. So many of those lunging, looping punches by Perez, and most of them have been answered by counter shots by Agbeko. I have never seen a fighter easier to hit with the right hand than Perez. We saw it with Dmitry Kirillov. He just reloaded and reloaded and threw that punch. And Agbeko is landing it almost at will. Stop! Step back. No, no. No knockdown. Push. That was a Whoa. push by Agbeko. No, no knockdown. Let's go. Box. Well, we said earlier, Al, that uh, Perez is hittable. And that is being proven here by Agbeko. With Showtime Championship Boxing, we bring you all the action from here at ringside and with Elite XC showcasing mixed martial arts, Showtime Sports take you inside the cage. A new class of mixed martial artists is on the rise, hungry to showcase their skills, destined to become champions and determined to prove themselves as elite fighters. The future of mixed martial arts is here on Elite XC. The Showtime free preview ends soon. So order Showtime now for $6.95 per month or less for three months. Call 1-888-SHOWTIME or go to SHO.com slash offer for complete details. Call now. Yeah, you know, the, uh, our last uh, Elite XC show, Robbie Lawler, coming back in a thrilling main event to win a match that looked like he wasn't going to do so well in. So it's very exciting stuff. Exciting stuff here, a thriller, and uh, Agbeko in charge. The challenger, Luis Alberto Perez, needs a second half rally if he is to retain his title. It is round seven. Scheduled for 12 for the IBF Bantamweight crown. Perez in the red, the champion. Stop, step back. Here we go, box. Seeing his belt slip away here. Unofficially, how do you see it at this particular juncture? I've given every single round to Joseph Agbeko. I'm winning all, seven, all six rounds of this fight. Nice left hook to the jaw by Agbeko. There were the first two rounds of the rounds in, in, maybe in debate, but since then he has just completely controlled this match. Nice right hook, though, that, and that's the ticket for Perez. If he can land that punch, maybe no, he can no, make stop. something happen. That's a push no down. No knockdown. Be close. 
intriguing uh, affair. Can't Al, push him down. No. In that, let's go, box. It's stirring action, but one-sided. Yeah, that's a very good point. We've had bouts like this. Yeah. You know, um, you mentioned the Claudi Diego Corrales fight. A perfect example. It's very exciting, even though Claudi was winning most rounds. There's how Press Row sees it. All on Beko across the board. Box. In convincing fashion. You know, we talked about the opposition of Agbeko. He's fought seven fighters in their pro debuts, which, you know, usually you don't get to that number. Um, and uh, he just hasn't fought a lot of experienced fighters, but when he has, he's done well. Great action. Continue. Straight right hand pushes Perez back. A left hand off the top of Perez's Stop. head by yeah, Agbeko. Yeah, yeah. Then Perez pushes him down. There's a cut under the left eye of Perez, not in a bad place. Right uppercut by Perez, missing. Perez's punches are becoming much wider, with much less on them, and Beko is throwing those great straight right hands. Perez momentarily dazed. He is a little bit on the disoriented side right now. Perez, the left-hander in the red, the champion. And Beko looking very fresh. Beko up on his toes, Perez more flat-footed. Now, Perez really telegraphing, as Al pointed out, those shots intended for the body are being caught by the hands of Agbeko. Big right hand by Agbeko that stuns the champion, and the champion with bravado says, bring it on, pal. That was the first time in this fight I think Perez has been really hurt, even though you oh, showed that bravado. Hurt again, right out. the right hand that snapped Perez's head back. Stop, step back, here we go. A Box. vicious round Time. for the champion Perez. Left hook, you have to throw the left hook. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? You got to keep throwing the left. Let's see, let's have the doctor look at him. Let's have the doctor look at him. We're okay, we're okay. Well, Luis Perez was able to get in one of his right hooks. And it may all be academic, because as we look at this action, in the meantime, it is over. Agbeko celebrates as the referee has stopped the fight. Referee Dan Still has stopped the fight. The referee or doctor here in California can stop the fight. A little different from the unified rules. And we've got ourselves a new world champion, a changing of the guard in the bantamweight division, a dejected Luis Alberto Perez sees this fight stop. And Joseph King Kong Agbeko is your new IBF bantamweight champion. What a job by Agbeko, an upset in our opening bout from Sacramento. Being hugged by Vinny Scalpino, his manager, who's also Joshua Claudia's manager, unheralded Joseph Agbeko from the Bronx, New York, by way of Accra, Ghana, in his first world title shot, is the new IBF Bantamweight champ. Who's that guy on the right? He derails Luis Alberto Perez, who was making his first title defense. Agbeko goes to 25 and one with 22 knockouts. Perez, meanwhile, drops to 25 and two. His first loss since 2000, snapping a 10 fight win streak. Well-placed confidence, wasn't it, by this young man as he etches his name in the champions of what is a very talented division. Agbeko kind of sneaking up on everybody, particularly Mr. Perez. Not tremendously well-known and snatches away the IBF belt. King Kong is standing tall. Well, this will show you how he dominated the action late in the round. The right hand landed so many times in this fight. Look at, there's three right there that landed. He landed, I'm going to say he landed 50 or 60 really good right hands during the course of this bout. And ultimately, it took its toll on Luis Perez, whose defensive liabilities just caught up with him tonight.
Same sequence, and you see it from a different angle, but you see those straight right hands. Those are very well-delivered punches. Many of them starting when Perez initiates an attack and leaves himself open, as he did so often during this fight. Again, Agbeko using the straight right, it became his signature in this uh, fight, although he mixed in a lot of left hooks as well. But that was the punch that did in Luis Perez. All right, let's get the official announcement from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Great to see you, man. This is it, man. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of round number seven, our referee in charge, Dan Still, stops the contest upon advice of the ringside physician. He is the winner by way of knockout and the new IBF bantamweight champion of the world, Joseph King Kong Agbeko. I'm the man. I am the man. Yeah, me, I'm the man. Well, that's right, Joe. You are the man. You're the new IBF Bantamweight champion. Yeah. What a turn of events here in Sacramento tonight in our opening bout. With the main event still to come.